So now the babies are developed enough that I can trust the mothers in a bigger, more spacious cage. Um, we've got it set up with, with their, uh, their new bigger cages. So one of the changes we've made is we gave them a bigger nest box. Now, I've heard people complaining, hey, why do you have them in such a small nest box? This is the box they were in before. So you see the size difference? This is the boxes they were born in. Well, they need to be tight and small when they're little newborns. So the mom's wrapped around them and they're nice and close to their mom, kind of tight and cozy. But then as they develop, eventually they're so big that obviously they don't have enough room. So now we've got these bigger, more spacious nest boxes. They're still tight and cozy. That's how mink like it. That's how it's supposed to be. If the nest box is roomy, it's too big. One of the things that might happen if it's too big, first off, they're not gonna be as comfortable in it. But another thing is, is that the little babies might start pooping in the corner if they have too much space. So you want it to be tight and cozy all the time. Now it's tight and cozy in a much bigger box because the babies are much larger. So this is how it's set up when we're not around so that they've got, uh, you know, obviously shade if the sun's shining. They also have protection from the weather if it's raining. So this is how it's normally set up um, when we're not around. And then we've got a second board across the top. And what that does is it gives them um, additional shade. This won't be up here necessarily in the winter, but in the summer it's important for them to have all the shade they can get. So we have this up while it's warm. And then from there they can jump up onto this little shelf and go into their, their run. And this run you'll see in the run and in the cage both it's lined with this plastic. This plastic is specifically designed for uh, for them for a couple different things. The holes provide drainage. So if they urinate, it pours through. It doesn't sit in pool. When we wash it down, so how I clean this is I just spray it down with the hose. The water immediately drains off. It doesn't sit in pool and stay wet all the time. The reason we have them instead of just the wire is this plastic is a lot softer and more forgiving on their feet and the holes being much smaller, it gives their feet a wider surface area to walk on so their feet don't get sore up from walking on the wire. I used to use just wood. There was a problem with wood. One thing was um, it, it soaked up any urine or blood or feces or anything that got on it, and so it was hard to keep clean. This plastic is really slick, so you spray it, boom, it's clean. Any blood from feeding, any feces, any urine just sprays right off and it stays nice and clean, and it doesn't, it isn't porous, so it doesn't absorb any moisture um, allowing bacteria to grow and things like that. So it stays way more clean, um, yet it's good for their feet. So then, the reason this is covered is both for shade for the mink, but more importantly, it's shade for the water. So they've got these water pans to swim in. If the, water, if the sun's beating down on the water, it creates two problems. Number one, it heats up the water. So the mink doesn't have a cool place to swim, it has a hot place to swim, which they don't want. They want a nice cool place to swim. So it keeps the water cool. It also keeps the water cleaner. If the sun's shining on it, algae's gonna grow. Also, leaves and, and such are gonna fall from the trees or dust blowing around. So by keeping it covered, the water stays cleaner from debris, from algae, and from bacterial growth because the hot water obviously promotes bacterial growth. So it keeps the water fresher longer. You're still gonna need to change it on a regular basis. I like to change it, oh, at least once or twice a week at a minimum, even if it's staying pretty clean, to keep the, the, mosquito, the mosquito larva from growing in it. Um, so anyway, that's the setup here. They got a nice little place to swim, and then they can run back and forth. So one thing you'll notice is I've got a little water pan, or a little water cup at the very bottom. This is for the babies to drink from. So they've got quick and easy access to water. They can crawl up here and get a drink. And you'll notice that the run is attached higher in the cage. So that's so the babies don't climb in it until they're big and strong enough to really uh, be able to get down there safely. So while they're young and helpless, they're stuck on this side of the cage. Once they get strong enough to climb up the cage and start exploring, then they're ready to come down to the water anyway. But in the meantime, they've got this little pool or this little cup of water to drink from so that they can get water. So those are my main breeder cages. Now you'll notice this line of cages has two different, two extra compartments at the end that doesn't have a run attached. So what I've done with those 
is I've attached a tube on each compartment. So this tube runs under the runs and comes over to here where they have a second cage and a little pool to swim in. So they could swim around here, be in this cage, run back and be in that cage where their nest box is. So they can go back and forth and get more exercise and, and more enrichment. We also have this cage. So the, the corner one, it has a pipe that goes under this cage here and comes through here and attaches to this little cage. It then has another pipe attached to this little cage, which we keep the wood on so it stays shaded so they got a nice cool place to lay. They're not stuck in the sun. But the pipe goes up. So that pipe runs over the, the door doorway, comes down here. And then the mink's got a hundred gallon aquarium to swim in. We're gonna put some minnows in here for the mink to chase around and catch. We haven't yet, but we're going to put some minnows in here. So we'll be able to get some videos of the mink chasing the minnows around in this big aquarium. For now, we have it with just a few inches of water, just under a foot, because the baby mink need to get used to it. Um, eventually, we're gonna have the baby mink be in this cage. Right now, we have one of the males in it, but when the babies get a little more developed, we're gonna start rotating them through these cages, so they'll be in here. And so we have it at a baby water level first. Once they're accustomed to it, we'll eventually raise the water level up, you know, pretty much to the top of the tank. We'll leave a few inches off the top and then there'll be a lot more exciting chase, but we're gonna wait till the babies are fully developed, probably halfway through the summer before we do that. This is another cage that we have. It's a multi-level cage. This is the nest box at the bottom where they sleep. Obviously it's got a cover so it stays nice and dry. And then they can work their way through these levels. This was the cage that I built for Rio uh, years ago. So they work their way through each level and then at the top they've got a pipe that they can then travel down. They could travel down through this pipe and then the pipe comes up and over the doorway just like the other uh, pipe does. And then this pipe feeds down into this barrel where they've got another place to swim. So this is their swimming pool in this barrel. So this is what I call my pool enclosure. It's uh, underneath my porch. I've wired it all in. And you'll see I've got these, this rock. Uh, my brother-in-law, you'll notice I use this, this flat rock a lot for my stuff. Because my brother-in-law, Maggie's brother, works at a granite place. And I'm gonna get nipped on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> it works at a granite place. And um, so they build granite countertops and such. So I get all their scrap and I use it for building cages. Uh, so you'll, you see I use it for paths and different stuff. Anyway, so I put this granite, pieces of granite countertop all over in here so the mink can't dig out of the cage. Another thing that's useful about it is it keeps it clean. So if they poop, I just come in here with, the, uh, with a little shovel, scoop it up, and then I spray it all off with the water. If it was just dirt, them urinating in the dirt, it would be really hard to clean. You'd have to like dig up the dirt all the time. Plus they might dig out eventually. Mink aren't the biggest of diggers, but they can dig. And if they get determined enough, they could just dig out. Um, also, if you notice, they've got a big pool to swim in. If we had a dirt floor, they would be swimming, come off, dry off in the dirt, go swimming again. And pretty soon this is just a big pool of mud. So the rocks keep the water clean, far cleaner than it would be otherwise. It keeps, it's easier to clean. I can spray off the, the, the dried urine residue and the poop really easily. And um, it keeps the mink from digging out. It's also a good substance to be on the mink's feet because it's nice and flat. And so the mink um, aren't like hurting their feet like on wire. They might be rubbing their feet raw. Also, it keeps their claws trimmed. Running around on this granite, just like in the wild, a mink running around on the rocks on the shore, it keeps their, their claws nice and trim. And this is a great enclosure because it's big and spacious. The mink can run around. They've got tunnels that they can run through. They've got nest boxes in the corner they can sleep in. And of course, they've got the swimming pool. This swimming pool has a bunch of minnows in it. And one thing you'll notice that I didn't mention is this is the shaded part of my yard. So a lot of the day, this is shaded. So all this shade I'm creating, artificial shade, isn't necessary through a lot of the day because of this nice tree creating shade for us. So I purposely put it on this side of the house where it has shade for most of the day. However, there are times of the day when the sun's above us and the shade of the tree doesn't help and they will be getting sun beaten on them. So that's why you've got to make sure you've got shade 
lots of places for them to have shade so they can get cooled off in the heat of the day and they're not uh, they're not overheating overheating is a big problem for mink so the swimming pool and the shade really help to prevent any issues there so the next cage I'm going to show you is this cage that I built for Fang years ago so you'll see this cage has a nest box up here hey Abby girl and they've got these branches that the mink can climb on they go all over up in here. Just like the other cages, it has plastic on the bottom to help protect their feet. But it, it also can drain, so it keeps them nice and clean. The folk, they can poop over there in the corners and keep the poop out, up off, out of their cage. And then they can run around on this plastic, which keeps their feet good. And then that branch, like Abby's showing us, leads to another tunnel. You gonna show us, Abby, do you wanna go down the tunnel for us? No, she doesn't. She's like, no, you're more interesting right now. And that's their little bed. She can go climb in her nest box, and that's where they sleep. And then this tunnel, like I said, they can run to over here. Don't climb on my head, Abby. Thank you. This tunnel comes from this window, and it comes down around and leads to this multi-level cage. So in this multi-level cage, the tunnel enters in from the bottom. And you'll notice there's wire along the bottom so the mink can go poop and pee off of the wire, keeping the cage clean. But she can run along here, and just having a little section of wire is totally fine. They're not gonna soar their feet up just because they got a few square feet of wire. Because if you notice, in order to get through the levels, the mink's gotta climb up to this plastic, which unfortunately, this is solid plastic. I wish it had the holes in it, but it's better than running on wire. So they can run back and forth, weaving up and there's there's holes in the corner so they've got to weave show us abby they've got to weave from side to side to get to each level thank you abby that was very helpful and as they get to each level at the top level they've got another pipe and this pipe leads down so she can run down through this pipe and here she comes and abby comes out there and here she's got a full cattle trough that she could swim around in so you can see there's little minnows in here for her to catch. So she can swim around and chase minnows all day and catch minnows. And you know, that provides a healthy snack. But far more important than that is the fact that it gives her something to do. She's not bored in a cage. No matter how big and cool a cage is, it's all boring if there's nothing to do in that cage. So having these minnows in here gives Abby or whatever minks in the cage at the moment something to do. They can come down here and chase minnows, chase minnows, chase minnows, get a lot of exercise, get a lot of me mental stimulation, physical stimulation, and then they can work their way back. So one thing that you'll notice it has in common with all of my cages is you've got water on one end of the cage and they've got to go through different tunnels and, and runways and such to get to the other end where the nest box is. They're always at opposite ends of the cage. Why do I do that? Well, it gives them a reason to get up and go somewhere. Oh, I need a drink. I'm sleeping in my nest box. I'm thirsty or I'm hot. I want to go for a swim or I'm bored. I want to chase some fish. Okay, so now I travel through this whole crazy system like this or a simple system like some of the other ones where they just go through a runway and they travel to water where they get a drink or they take a swim or they chase fish or whatever. Then when they're done swimming or getting a drink, what's the next thing they're gonna wanna do? Oh, I wanna dry off, I wanna curl up and go to sleep, I'm tired of swimming. Where's my nest? And so they go travel through the entire cage all over again back to their nest box. And so it does two things. Well, I guess really it does two main things. One thing is it encourages them to stay active and get exercise. The other thing is it does is it also keeps their nest dry because they're not coming back soaking wet right from the water right to the nest box and getting their nest all soaking wet they're likely to kind of rub off and dry on the way. And even if they don't, if they run as fast as they can to their nest box, they're gonna be dripping dry as they go. So by the time they get to the nest, they're a lot, have a lot less water on them than they would have if they just went straight from their swimming pool right to their nest box. So really important to keep the nest box dry and really ideal just to encourage the mink to utilize the entire cage. Now, showing you all this, anyone who's watched my channel, what do I do with my mink? Do I leave them locked in cage for their whole life? No, I don't. I take them fishing. I take them hunting. They take them on walks. They're getting out and about all the time. But the reality is, is even someone who's active with their mink like me, there's going to be days or times of the day when the mink's not out. And having a good 
enclosure where they can get exercise and enrichment and and not just be stuck in a little box is going to help their mental health and their physical health both and in all they'll be a happier mink and if you go on a away for vacation for a week you don't feel horrible your mink's stuck in a little cage because he's got a great enclosure to to experience you'll notice that some of my cages are way better than others right as far as spacious and, and giving them more enrichment. So you might wonder, well, what's the lucky mink who gets to live in this palace? And who's the sorry sucker that's got to live in the smaller cage, you know, that just has a run back and forth? Well, the reality is, is uh, to keep things fair and more importantly, to keep things interesting for the mink, I change it up. So once a week or twice a week, or maybe even three times a week, I rotate. So the mink that's living in here will only be here for a week or less and then he goes into the next cage and that mink goes into the next cage and next cage and I basically have a rotation so that they're continually changing what cage they're in. This does a lot of things. One thing, it keeps it fair, obviously. You know, it'd be sad if the same mink had to sit in the same uh, lesser cage and the other one got in the better cage. So it keeps it fair. They all get an opportunity to be in the various cages, but it also keeps things so much more interesting for the mink because if you notice, a lot of these cages are very different from each other. Some cages have cooler swimming pools. Some have more surface area to run on. Others have, have different um, advantages that they get to climb. So like this cage is the only one where they really get to climb. I mean, some of the other ones, sure, they climb up the pipe, but that's different from climbing on a branch. So it all gives them different experiences and mentally and physically stimulates them in a different way. So that each cage kind of has something different to offer. That way, as the mink rotate through each different cage, they, you know, they stay in one cage for a while, they get used to it, then they go to the next one. And they get to physically work out different muscles because they're climbing in this cage and maybe swimming more in the, in the pool cage. They also get to mentally be stimulated. They're not bored of the same boring cage every day. They get a new one. Next couple of days, oh, we get another one. Oh, next couple of days, oh, we get another one. So it keeps them mentally and physically more active they're more encouraged to play and explore because they haven't been in that cage for like a month. They've been through some other cage in, in during that time. So it really helps them to physically and mentally be more stimulated than they would be otherwise. So anyways, reason I show you all this, uh, I'm proud of it obviously, I put a lot of work into this, but also give you guys some ideas. You know, you're in a different situation than me. Maybe one of these models works good for your home and another one doesn't, or maybe you're going to combine two or three of my ideas all into one big awesome idea or, or something like that. And basically the idea is, you know, think, think with your mind, what can you build? What can you afford? You don't have to go out and build this ridiculous elaborate enclosure if you can afford, afford it. There's ways like these runs. This run makes this cage have a lot of useful square feet, but it uses just a little bit of wire. There's some areas that are a little more spacious and use a little bit more wire on both ends but in the middle they've got this little tube that doesn't take up any wire you've got these pipes they're not even wire at all and they're cheap you can just buy them at the hardware store and they can travel to and from cages um, without you having to build this huge cage it's expensive it basically cut, keeps the costs down but makes it more entertaining and more useful for the mink and encourages more exercise so anyway just wanted to show you guys some ideas. I hope you appreciate this video I put together. And, um, you know, keep watching. We'll, we'll show you more.